In this how-to video, we will show you some great tips on how to anchor. Hi everyone, uh, Dan emailed me this week and asked me about anchoring and specifically is it different anchoring a, a catamaran as opposed to a monohull? Well basically no it's the same but there are a few tips I can give you if you've got a, a catamaran that you may not have thought about and equally they would apply to a monohull so let's see those a little later in the program. This is such a controversial uh, subject, so I'm not actually going to uh, back one particular anchor over another. But modern anchors do tend to hold faster and hold for longer. So we do need to think about that. And also one important thing is how the actual anchor fits on the barrel roller and around the front of the boat. Because some anchors are better for some boats than others. The next contentious issue is uh, whether to have a swivel or not. Well, our anchor is a Jambo, which is a German anchor, and uh, the manufacturer supplies it with a swivel. So uh, we do use the swivel. Uh, a lot of people tend to think that the swivel is dangerous and they can break, and that has been documented. So you've really got to research on whether you think you should have a swivel or not. We have the swivel because the manufacturer provides the anchor with the swivel. How much road the uh, manufacturer recommends that you put out. So that is the amount of chain or warp that um, the manufacturer recommends for a particular depth of water uh, for a particular anchor. And actually it's quite surprised me. Um, for example, Rockner suggests that a ratio of five to one. So if you had one meter of water, you put out five meters of chain. Or if you had 10 meters of water, you put out 50 meters of chain. And it's exactly the same for the Lumar uh, anchor, the Delta. Personally, um, we put out a lot more than that. Uh, we never go anywhere without putting out seven or eight to one. And uh, certainly if we've got the space, uh, like in this situation here in Alvor, where we're the only boat in this part of the anchorage, we've actually got 10 to one out. So for our uh, five meters of water, we got a 50 meters of chain out. I think it's a lot better to have the chain on the seabed than in the anchor locker. Now let's try and work out how much chain uh, you need to put out. Now there are many different ways of doing this. We can take wind speed and boat lengths, but we're gonna focus on the common one, which is the depth of water. Now in the Mediterranean and in the Caribbean, you really don't need to worry about the tide. So you can just take the depth of water, uh, calculate it off your depth sounder, depending on how your depth sounder reads, and uh, go from there. But here in, uh, Portugal, uh, we have uh, tides which can amount to around about two meters and if you go further north into Europe they can be five meters or seven meters. So we really need to take that into consideration. So let's look at this example. Here's our catamaran and it's just about to drop its anchor and at low tide the water is two meters deep and at high tide the water goes up to three meters. So we need to take the higher number, the three meters into consideration. Add to that the height of the bow roller off the sea level. So in our example on Ocean Fox, we are two meters high. So we actually have to calculate it, not for three meters of water, but for five. So then I normally say, well, we'll go for 10 to one and see what happens. So I would be looking at putting out 50 meters of chain. I probably tell Carla to put out 40 to start with and then we add our bridle which is another five meters um, out. So we're going to look at bridles a little bit later because they are quite different to what you would have on a monohull. So probably the first thing to do is to choose your spot and uh, here we've got about three meters of water and we know it's uh, kind of sandy mud, sand really. And so that way we can work out how much anchor chain to put out. And we have to remember that we are 
in a tidal area and okay I'm just telling Carlo it's okay to go at this stage you need to stop and drop the first five meters of anchor chain over the bow before moving backwards to get the anchor on the seabed. You then start motoring backwards slowly to lay the anchor chain out on the seabed. Digging it in, well that's probably the most important thing and this is something that a lot of people don't even do or they don't actually spend enough time doing it so the idea is that once the boats come back and you're hanging at the end of the anchor line you just slowly increase the power on the throttles so that uh, gradually you're pulling and pulling and pulling and don't do it instantly otherwise you could rip the uh, anchor off the seabed but just do it gradually and let the anchor chain pull the anchor into the seabed now if this takes a minute it takes a minute and uh, really don't be embarrassed if you spend a lot longer uh, doing this and people are watching you it really doesn't matter and a good way to tell whether the anchor is really held is to look at your uh, GPS position your speed uh, on your plotter and that'll tell you uh, how fast you're traveling at and uh, if it's something like 0.9 knots the chances are your anchor is dragging uh, if it's around about 0.1 or 0.2 knots then um, it is probably holding and you're just swaying slightly and the GPS is just picking it up. So that's one of my top tips. On the catamaran you have a bridle. This consists of two ropes, one from each bow that goes to a centre cleat which attaches to the anchor chain. This allows the stress to be spread across the boat and not just in one point. On the end of our bridle we've got a swivel so they can spin and we used to have a hook, I'll show you the hook, but now we just use a soft shackle and I'll tell you this works so well. And all you have to do is pass it through the chain. You notice that the bridle is on top of the chain and that's otherwise the chain will rub here and rub it away. So that's all you need to do, put that on at this point you let out more chain, in our case a further 5 metres, and slowly move the boat backwards until the bridle takes the strain. We then let out a little more chain to create a loop of weight to hold the bridle in place. Once the bridle takes up the pressure, we actually put more chain out as a weight. Altogether, we now have a total of 50 metres of chain off the front of the boat. So the next question is, should I use an anchor buoy? Well, a trip line, which is a line that goes from the tip of the anchor up to a buoy. And uh, there is a great advantage to this. Uh, for example, when we were in uh, Simi in uh, Greece, our anchor got stuck under a chain on the seabed and it cost us 100 euros to get the uh, anchor removed by a diver. And we've also had a situation here recently in uh, Portugal where the windlass uh, stopped working and I couldn't actually physically pull the 50 metres of chain up with the anchor hanging on the bottom of it. So we managed to pull the anchor up using the trip line and the buoy. So for me, yeah, every time I would use a trip line and an anchor buoy. And uh, it also uh, stops people um, anchoring on top of you, uh, on top of your anchor, which I think is a bit, of a, a bit of a good thing. You can sort of claim your space in the anchorage. Balls, and that's what a lot of people say about the day signal, the black ball that you are supposed to put up by law to mark the fact that you are anchored. And uh, we all go around at night and we put our anchor light on to tell everybody that we're anchored, but uh, so few people actually use the black ball. Here in Portugal, they get quite upset about it. So if you're here, I'd really recommend it. We always do this. Uh, in general, people doesn't. Uh, doesn't mean we shouldn't do it if it's the right thing to do. And it only takes a minute, doesn't it? It only takes a minute. It actually
actually in Portugal they are quite uh, hard on these actually. Yeah. It does depend where you are. Yeah, it does depend where you are. In circumstances where there's uh, limited room due to the number of boats in the anchorage, you could actually go down to uh, three to one uh, as your ratio for chain over water depth. But a top tip is to actually uh, put out five to one to start with, dig it in, pull it tight, and then take up the slack. That gives a better angle for the anchor to pull into the seabed with the chain pulling on it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a lot of work actually and uh, it got more and more complicated as we went through it and uh, I hope you enjoy anchoring because there's absolutely nothing to be worried about. Um, just take your time, do your business, dig it in and have a good night's sleep. Bye for now. If you found this video useful, look up our channel, subscribe and consider becoming a Patreon.